Yo everyone, and... Yo? Yeah, I didn't say that. <laughs> no. What's up guys, and welcome to the first part of... Um, an 11 part series. An 11 part series. 11 or 10. We might, we might shorten the last part down to the last 17. But, we're gonna uh, count down all the Souls bosses from uh, best to worst. And uh, the rule is, if it has a health bar and a name, it's in the list, except Chalice Dungeon bosses. Yeah, we're not gonna include Chalice Dungeon bosses. Yeah, but all the main game stuff and, well, DLC stuff as well. Because if we did that, if we included the Chalice Dungeon bosses, then we'd have to include stuff like fucking Brain Liquor, which is just Blue Cthulhu from fucking Upper Cathedral, which is not a boss. Yeah, exactly. And then you could go, oh, but what about this, what about that? Too much grey area, so we're just going to stick to main game stuff. So, we're going to start, for this one, we're going to start at 10 and work our way up. Yeah. But then the next episode, we'll go back to... It'll be 11 more and way down. Yeah. That way we can sort of give some element of... Oh, what's number Who's one? Who's it going to be? So, something we should mention is that this list is comprised of all the bosses in context of how they stand today today yeah between each other as well now we might like one boss for one reason and hate another boss for the same reason that we liked another one but it's all to do with context and you know the the nuances between the bosses it's not so black and white yeah it's not as simple as this boss does this and we like it but this boss also does this and we hate it there's differences there's small things and we are judging all the bosses again as they stand today yeah um but number 10 yeah so we'll just get straight into it yeah so number 10 is Suralon. yeah so and Suralon is a boss from the dark souls 2 dlcs the second one the first thing you notice when you step into his arena is holy shit the floor is immaculate like so amazing. shiny best house made any <laughs> <laughs> not to mention the floor no, not just the floor, rather. Yeah. He's got really good attack damage, and his moveset combos are really good in that they'll punish a player if you make consistent small errors. Yeah. He will stack damage on top of you, yeah, which so, is I mean, really difficult like to deal with. Does do a lot of damage, but he also is uh, quite speedy. He's got one of that attack that like, zooms straight. Reminiscent, and almost, of Artorius, in a sense, from Dark Souls 1, because he has like the leaping strikes, and he has like these buffed attacks and shit like that. It's really cool. It's a good yeah. boss fight. But he's definitely like a highlight of most of the Dark Souls 2 bosses. I mean, there is like maybe five or six good bosses in Dark Souls 2 <laughs> at best, but yeah, he's definitely one of them. But uh, other cool things about the boss is he rewards co-op summons with bits of armour and shit. Mm -hmm. And his weapon and armour are actually kind of good in general. Like Sorolone's set, Sor set is quite fashionable and the Along Titan is really funny in that you can seppuku people to kill them. Yeah. You can also parry the seppuku, which is great. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he offers a unique challenge where if you beat him without taking any damage, he seppukus himself. Which is fucking amazing. If you've not seen it, go on YouTube and find it. It's either without taking damage or without healing once, but he, he does like... Yeah. He restores honour in but, the end. But the main thing about him is, unlike most Dark Souls 2 bosses, he isn't fucking shit. Right. So, number nine. Yeah, number nine, and it's Calamite. Oh, yeah. Who is, like, in our eyes, the best dragon boss that they've ever done. Oh, definitely. He's got this uh, perfect balance between ground and aerial combat, so he can fly because he has a dragon, but he doesn't continuously fly. Hint, hint. Um, also, like, his attack moveset is really fucking cool. He's got some really nice damage as well, which couples with the fact that he's a bit of a grind, yeah. so... You know, it's... you need to manage your heals and stuff. Make sure, you need to keep yeah. on top of the boss. Like you can't just fucking wail on it until it dies. It's just not going to happen. You need to make sure you know you've got your openings and stuff. This obviously doesn't count if you are fucking incredible at the game, but for the, for most players, this is what you're going to have to be dealing with. Mm -hmm. He does good damage to you, and he also has that unique damage buff mechanic where if you get like caught in his weird eye attack, you end mm -hmm. up taking extra damage from him. So there's only has eyes for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, plus um, cutting off his tail gives you a fantastic weapon. One of the best tail cut weapons in the game without a doubt. Yeah. Um, and of course you can kill him outside of the uh, the typical route where you'd usually get goth to shoot him down and then you go fuck him up. You can beat him without doing that. Yeah, so you so just you, you have to fire for like 50 minutes arrows into him as he flies in and out, but you do you can kill him that way. So. Or maybe you'd get lucky and you might be able to land a lucky fucking hyper buff plunging attack. <laughs> I don't know as he flies by. <laughs> so yeah, moving on to the next boss, we're going to go with Ludwig, yeah. who takes our number 8 spot because he's just fucking crazy. Like most of the bosses in the top 10, he has a DLC boss from uh, the new Bloodborne DLC, but if you're going against this guy and you're not at the right level, just to make a point, if you are at the correct level for any Bloodborne boss, it's going to be significantly easier. Because of passive defences. Yeah. But if you go against Ludwig at like level 80, level 90, he will probably give you a bit of a tough time. Yeah, definitely run for your money. I mean, obviously there's those of you around us, yes we know, you never get hit by any attack, whatever, but 
we know he has a he has a tough boss. Yeah. But moving on to some of the stuff that Ludwig's really good for, um, he gives you a reason to go arcane in a sense because he gives you the Bloodborne equivalent of the Moonlight Sword, and it's actually yeah. pretty fucking good and pretty fucking cool. Like, visually, he's just fucking insane. He's just horrible insane. to look at. The weird eye thing that spits ooze at. It's, oh, it's come. Crazy. You can say come. Weird. Spits it's come. come. It's probably come. Uh, and I mean, like I said, he's really difficult. Uh, it's a good challenge, but the thing is, is if you are having too difficult a time, you can summon Volter. So, you know, it's not the fact that he's impossible, but if you're a scrub, then you can get Volter. Mm -hmm. Oh, and let's not forget, he does have the multiple forms thing, which is really cool, where the first stage of the fight is like you're fighting this horse beast thing that's completely savage, but then the second stage of the fight, it's... He whaps out a fucking blade. Aye. He pulls out a chibber and he starts threatening your, your fucking family with you and all that <laughs> shit. Like, I'll cut you! Um, I'll cut you! <laughs> but that's Ludwig. Yeah. So next on our list. Artorius. Obviously. So, really, Artorius isn't, like, the hardest fight in all of Souls. No. But he's... I mean, he's still challenging, yep. but the reason he's... Uh, Best high on, the, on all of the bosses list. It's basically because he's easily one of the most fun fights in the entire rate of the Soul series. Yeah, he's got some really good attacks that like chase the player, they keep the pressure on you, so it's a constant engaging fight. It's really fun. His damage is really good as well, and yeah. there's just a lot of small things that Artorias does all together which make the fight really fun and really challenging and really rewarding at the end of it. Plus, you know, he has a thing where he'll punish you if you know if you miss one of the rolls, he'll hit you with like this mad flippy attack or you know, um, fucking, if you can't break his buff, then obviously you need to deal with that. Yeah, or if you get too greedy, he'll hit you with a fast black goo backhand and shit yeah. like that. It's really cool. But uh, not only that, he does have some really cool lore attached to him. Yeah, um, where he was a giant legend, essentially, yeah. among Lordran, where you came from, and you come back to Ulysseel, and he's all fucked up with the abyss, because Manus is in his head. Uh, Let him get in his head. But uh, yeah, so that's Artorius. Uh, moving on. Mm. So, we don't know what it is about Bloodborne, but they really got the bosses fucking down at E, and finally we Especially were given... Especially the Hunter ones, yeah. Yeah. And so? German. Mm -hmm. So finally we were given a fitting end boss. Oh yeah, fantastic final boss to end a playthrough on. Now, of course, you don't have to end the playthrough on him. Which, which is actually something that we enjoy, Yeah. because you have the option to just not fight him. Or, you can go beyond him and you can take on a different boss afterwards, but... Yeah. Now... The, good, the great thing about German is he's always at least somewhat difficult. We think so, anyway. Yeah. We, we think he's always at the very least a challenge, be it that his moveset's pretty good. He can catch you off guard, he's really quick. Yeah, fast as fuck. He has some, like, horizontal... Really good damage, really yeah, good damage. Really, it's actually fun damage because it's not too much damage that it feels bullshit, and it's not so little damage where, like, you feel like he's attacking you with a wet noodle on a stick. <laughs> yeah. But it's... All his attacks to go with that damage as well, he has attacks that dash past you, which make it much tougher to land the gunshot to parry them. Yeah, there's abusable attacks, obviously, but the point is that an actual fight with German is always fun as well. Yeah. Um, not to mention the arena. Oh, the arena is fucking A++. If only they were able to have it so the flowers could be covered in blood as you're fighting, that'd be the only way they could make the boss better. And, you know, he has uh, multiple stages as well that you need to fight through and they require different strategies because you can't parry one of them. And each stage gets tougher and tougher and he gets faster in each stage and does a little bit more damage. Um, and if you beat him, you get his uh, fucking the burial blade, which is a fantastic weapon. Just the swag scythe. Just yeah. shing, shing. So, I mean, overall, so, German is fucking fantastic and we're really grateful that a Bloodborne boss is the end boss. They finally got a good there. end boss. Yeah. It's great. Thanks, Bloodborne. Okay, so you, you knew it had to be this far up, but it's Orphan Acost. Yeah, Orphan Acost takes the fifth spot because he's just... So, so difficult. Yeah, he's the hardest boss in any of the games. Easily by like a decent margin as well. Yeah, they're really going to have to ramp up the difficulty to keep up with that in Dark Souls 3. Yeah, it's but very he's, true. But he's really good. He's a little bit frustrating sometimes, sure, because yeah. he just, out of nowhere, he'll just like fucking one-shot you because of Bloodborne counter windows. See, that's the thing about Orphan Acost. He's this high up just because of how such a challenge and the fucking satisfaction you get from beating him. But it does have some kind of downsides with just that second form being beyond... <laughs> frustrating like you just can't predict fucking anything it's a little jarring with all the camera movements as well stage one however we think is really really good he's yeah. got a really cool weapon it's it's crazy crazy like design the opening cutscene is like really fucking disgusting and yeah, morbid and it keeps up with bloodborne's theme he's got a ridiculously huge like array of attacks to choose from yeah he has fucking so many so in that sense he's unpredictable because you're like oh what the fuck is he going to do and like, I was hearing those fucking screams in my head for weeks afterwards, wake up in cold shivers at night in them covered in a cold sweat. But I mean, overall, I think 
because of how much of a challenge off Nakos is, we just it can't not be this high up because he's just really he's, he's like so rewarding. Yeah, and I mean, frankly, to be as difficult as difficult as he is, like he's been designed exceptionally well. A lot of time and effort went into off Nakos, and frankly, he's the perfect end to Bloodborne. I think. Yeah, he's really good. Really, really strong end to the game. So next on our list is my favourite boss from Dark Souls 2, Fuminite. Yeah, it's an absolutely fantastic boss and is hits the balance between difficulty and chat like being too hard, being not too hard. Yeah, hits one that of, balance perfectly. Like they finally got the man in armor in Dark Souls right as well with this yeah. guy. I really, really love how they've done Fuminite. He's got he's got really, really he's a really expanded moveset. Yeah, huge, a huge variety of attacks as well as a multi-stage boss as well. Yeah, and in stage two, the damage ramp ups. It, it's like it's uh, it's one of those fights where it's really down to the wire. He can take you out at any minute and stuff like that. So it keeps yeah, you on definitely. your toes. Um, I mean, our first time going in, we took us so many goes to fucking beat that bastard. Yeah, he just caught us off guard at every stage. And he has that cool thing where if you're wearing any uh, bit of Velkstad's armor, he yeah. immediately goes stage two. Yeah, which I, I would prefer that because I think stage two is a little bit easier because his attacks are slightly more telegraphed. Now, admittedly. Uh, you have to take the boss killer setup out of the equation for any of the Dark Souls 2 bosses because the boss it killer melts. setup will, it will melt almost everything aside from like Sin. Yeah. So taking that out of it, I mean, especially on the further new games, you just basically just can't get hit off Unite once, essentially. Yeah. Um, not to mention as well, by the way, there's those idols that are littered around him where you can, sure, you can choose to break them down so he doesn't have warmth or you can knock down a couple and try and like corner the fight into a certain area. It's just yeah. it's just something else that you can work with in the fight and it's pretty cool. And obviously the equipment, the armor is beautiful. I, really I love, good. like the chest piece is just 10 out of 10. Yeah, the it's and the legs. so legs nice. Good. The legs are all right. And the, the <laughs> weapons are fucking fantastic. Oh yeah, well. the fume sword, the short sword and the uh, the ultra great sword are both fantastic. But weapons. overall, fucking Fume Knight's design is so damn good and especially considering the quality of what Dark Souls 2 was like, Fume Knight is definitely up yeah, there. Yeah, he so. definitely stands out. He's like, he's like the one hot chick in the group of ugly friends. Yeah. <laughs> so our number four spot goes to Manus and... Well, three. Is it number three yeah. spot? Yeah, okay, then it's number three spot. It goes to Manus. Uh, quite simply because he is just an amazing, fantastic like way to finish the Dark Souls 1 DLC. Um, all the story behind him that builds him up. He's this beast that's gone completely wild, and he actually meets the expectations that have been like put upon you, in, in a sense. Yeah. Very aggressive, very good moveset, as well as the whole, is he the pygmy? Is he not the pygmy? I mean, he is the pygmy. He's the fucking pygmy. But uh, yeah, for a 1v1 boss in Dark Souls 1, he is like the best one in terms of fun versus difficulty. He's this perfect, perfect balance. Yeah, he's a really tough boss, but still really entertaining. He sort of has a stage 2 where when you drop his health solo, he unlocks his black magics attacks. Yeah. And then you can, of course, defend that with a pendant item, or you can just get good and dodge it like everybody else. And he has these interesting attacks where he's got like the wacky inflatable arm thing. Yeah. It. So it gives him like extra range as well. It's it gives him, essentially, it gives him infinite range to an extent yeah. he can hit you anywhere within this radius basically with any attack which is really cool uh, plus i mean if you're a super scrub you can just cheese him with the bow if it yeah. really comes down to it but you know because we like having like different ways of beating a boss it's like something that we uh, appreciate yeah i can't tell you how many tries it took me to beat him so level one i don't i don't think i could have counted that high oh, okay. that was awful but, uh, but yeah, it was so, so fun though. Manus is number three. Uh, Manus is a well-deserved number three. He's on it. He might as well be number one because the top three bosses, the top four bosses, are close enough to be one. Yeah, it's it's hard to really pick. But anyway, on number two. Okay, so you knew this was going to be on the list, and of course it was going to be high up on the list. But it's on Steam Smoke. Of course, the single best example of a two-target boss that they've ever managed to create. Yeah, and in, in the whole of the Soul series. Yeah, because you've got Ornstein, this really short, really fast guy, and then you've got Smo, this really big, fat, really slow guy, and it's like they both have strengths and weaknesses, and they complement each other really well. Yeah, and it's about keeping track of both of them, which is really difficult. Unlike watching a defender, where you might as well just be fighting two watchers or two defenders, there's actually a bit of a challenge in that you have to play around the weaknesses of both of the bosses at the same time. Yeah, not only that, um, you know, they, depending on what one you kill first, depends on the equipment that you'll get at afterwards. Yeah, whether you want Smo's hammer and his armour, or you want the Leo ring and the spear and Ornstein's armour, it's up to you. Even now, at this stage for us, you can you can still fuck up the boss and it can they can still beat you. They're yeah. still challenging. Um, Stage two is ridiculously oh, yeah. good because what happens then is that they gain the other's strengths, which is... 
insane. Onsting gets much bigger, he does more damage, he has lightning AoEs and shit like that. Smo gets much bigger, he has lightning AoEs, he does a shitload more damage, and it's really cool how they've managed to work this boss from the very start to the very end, it's just a really fun, satisfying fight. Frankly, the the element of perfect design that's went into Ornstein's Smo is really the reason why they're so high up, because there is you can't fault it in any way. It's just perfect in every well, single You way. can when Ornstein goes Wizard Hitler and starts animation cancelling and gliding everywhere, then you can sort of fault yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Sure. Or the Smo's Hammer's lingering shovel hitbox if you <laughs> kill him during the animation. You can fault it a little, but overall it's just like the perfect example of a 2v1 boss fight. Or if you don't like 2v1s, you can probably you can summon a little get good and get Solaire. Yeah. But I mean only scrubs do that. Yeah, who 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 would do that? Fuck's sake. I, I mean I know I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. Definitely wouldn't I would do that. Nah, never do. So, boss number one is Maria. You've just got to see her. You got to? I mean, you literally got to. Cause you actually do, because she's the best boss they've ever made, so if you don't see her, then what the fuck are you doing? I mean, <clears throat> again, like we said, like the top, however many bosses, it's so hard to pick, but I think we Maria just edged there because she's such a well-designed one-target boss, yeah. and it's still difficult. Like She's really fun, she's really fast. I mean, she's hot, wink, wink. Aye, okay. <laughs> But interestingly is she's just <clears throat> difficult enough to not be frustrating like Koss, but still be immensely fun. She's such a fun fight, especially when she gets into her second and third forms, when she's faster, does more damage, has significantly increased range. And it's just non-stop pain train of punishment. Every mistake you make... Oh, she will punish every mistake. Yeah. Any mistake, you cannot fucking... Like, you, you cannot make a mistake against Maria. Admittedly, you can use the old Hunter's Bone, it does help, but even at that, you can still make a mistake with that and get punished. Yeah, she has really good chasing attacks as well. Oh yeah, she really Insane puts the pressure range. on. When she hits um, stage 2 and stage 3, she has really, really crazy range. Her hitboxes go a little bit wacky in stage 3 when you're like right next to her, sure. Yeah. But it's still a really fun, really engaging fight. You'll find that a lot of these bosses are in the top 10 for a lot of the same reasons. And that's why I don't know how they can keep making bad bosses. <laughs> <laughs> because they seem to be able to find the good reasons, but then just forget about them somehow. <laughs> But Maria is definitely one of the one of the biggest challenges in Bloodborne. She's one of the most fun fights in Bloodborne, without a doubt. Really cool um, armor set she's, as well. Never mind just Bloodborne. Across the whole series, like everything about her is just some of it is just a little bit better than everything else. Her move set yeah. is fantastic. The way she looks is like really good. She really fits with the Bloodborne theme. Her armor is swag. The balance between aggression and damage and difficulty and fun. Do you know what I mean? That yeah. balance is just. Been perfectly hit when it comes to Maria, so the that's why... The weapon she uses is fantastic. Admittedly, the Rukuyo isn't part of why Maria's good, because you don't get it well, from it's, her. It's, but... why, it's, why, it's part of why she's good, because she's ridiculously good with it, and it yeah. adds the, uh, such a, a huge attack variety to the fight as well. She's got all these slashing and poking attacks, and she's got these dashes and these really huge wind-up attacks where it's just this massive leash of blood or fire will come down with it, and all that fuck-ton of damage. And she's got an Evelyn scrub. 